welcome back to Linda's Pantry and I'm excited to bring you along for another canning session. Today we're going to can up some meat. Now I've uh, thawed out some venison and some elk meat here and this, uh, most of these packages were marked for stew meat. There was shank meat in here. It makes the best pull apart tender stroganoff or I love to use it in a shepherd's pie um, and it just makes for a really quick and easy weeknight meal or a camping meal. Uh, we use this all the time. It's my go-to when I forgot to take something out of the freezer and I'm making freezer space for something else. I also am extending the life of this elk and deer meat um, because the season is approaching. Uh, we want to make sure that we have all the elk and deer meat from the previous year either canned up or consumed. So we're also canning a corned beef brisket and I got this brisket on sale. I'm going to raw pack that. It raw packs better than all the other meats. But the venison and elk meat, and I'm mixing it, I don't care. It tastes delicious regardless. Um, I'm going to go ahead and par cook it. And I've got some broth that I've done. Uh, I've, I've got some really rich, actually, stock. Uh, beef stock that I've got back on the stove that I'm going to pack the jars with. And the reason I chose to do that, aesthetically it's prettier. And then your jar has two uses. When you open that jar, the broth that's on that meat is also great to use either to make a sauce or a gravy. So, that being said, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and put the corned beef away. I've cut it into one inch cubes. So, that can go in the refrigerator until I'm ready to can. And I'm going to go ahead and empty into this. Um, this is a full oven size aluminum tray empty my meat in here and I'm putting it in a 425 degree oven. Some of this is still partially frozen but it won't matter in the end. And set this all aside. I'm so excited. This is going to be so nice to have on the shelf. We are redoing our canning room where I keep most of my canning jars. Now these were steaks so I may keep those out for dinner time because uh, I've got a couple of them that have steaks. And I'll go ahead and cut those up into smaller pieces to go in the canning jars, but let's get them all out of the, the bed. And we're probably going to roast this for about 45 minutes. Um, but, all right, I'll be back. So guys, it's time to start the canning process. And this is really fun. Um, if you've never done canning before, you will, uh, you'll enjoy this. So I've got my meat that's partially cooked. Now I cooked that for 45 minutes and I actually bumped my oven all the way up to 500 because there was a lot of meat in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack the jars and use my debubbling tool to help me get this meat in the jar. And you want to pack it fairly tight, but I want room for broth as well. So um, you pack it to an inch of headspace. And I did put a quarter teaspoon of salt in the bottom of my jars. And let's see, do I want custom pick pieces here? And that looks about right. So about that much. And I'll bring you in close and show you that close up as well. And you're going to need your debubbler. Keep that in your hand. And go ahead and pour some of this delicious broth over this. And it is uh, beef stock with uh, onions and red wine and just absolutely delicious. Take your debubbling tool and go ahead and debubble all the way around the meat. And Sometimes that'll change your headspace. You just want to make sure that your meat is fully submerged. If you've got too much meat in there and it can't get underneath that liquid, that, that meat's going to turn a funky color and it's not going to be good. So, a little bit more liquid and another teaspoon or so. And then I've got uh, in a bowl here, I have um, vinegar. So I'm going to wipe the rim of my jar with vinegar 
and grab a wide mouth lid. And some of these are going to be done with tattlers, so let's just do a tattler lid. And if you hear noise in the background, that is my husband. He's putting up two more canning shelves for us. Okay, so I've got my tattler lid. You put your gasket, and you do have to heat these. You put the rubber gasket on there and go ahead and place that, center it on your jar. Get yourself a ring. And tattler lids are different. You know, regular lids, you go finger tight, and that's it. These, you go finger tight and back off just a smidge, just a little bit. It allows for expansion, but um, you, when you take it out of the canner, you're going to have to tighten it all the way down. So just allow some room to come and go. And there you go. Isn't that beautiful? And I need my jar lifter. Put it in the canning pot, and the canner is at about 180 degrees, so it will keep these hot until I'm done filling all the jars. Now let's come in. So we've got our jar. Go ahead and start putting meat in here. And some of the meat got a little more brown than other pieces, but it, and all in all, it's part it's partially cooked, um, and it, you'll get better results, I promise, than if you raw pack. If you're going to take the time to do this, why not just take the time to do it right? Now, it is, I'm not saying it's wrong to raw pack, I'm just saying that the results in the end are better if you do it this way. So go ahead and pack your jar, get some broth in here, and I've already got the salt in there. The broth is not salty, I usually don't salt very much, um, but it's full of flavor, so go ahead and it takes about a ladle full. Get your debubbler, put you back in the camera view, sorry about that. Get your debubbler and go all the way around the meat and make sure that you've got everything nicely done. Put that over there. And I feel like I've got too much in here. So I'm gonna take this big chunk out and put a smaller piece or two in there to replace that. Grab your um, your vinegar <laughs> cloth and wipe the rim of your jar. And when you're wiping, I always double check, make sure I haven't missed any nicks or you know any any cracks or nicks in my jar. Get your lid lifter, magnetic wand, and put that on. And now this is a regular lid, so it's going to go finger tight and in the canner it goes. Okay, so we're down to uh, the last three jars and I got nine jars on the bottom. I will tell you, if you use small mouth jars, you'll fit more in the canner than if you use a wide mouth jar, unless you're using these decorative um, Better Homes and Gardens jars that I got a couple years ago. They're fatter, they're kind of squatty. So that's what I did. I had more um, small mouths in the bottom, and then I have the rack on top, and I'm packing these jars, which that was a three pound, three point, uh, I don't know, three point four pound um, corned beef, and uh, I get I'm getting three jars out of it. But I've really packed these down, so I'm gonna I'm gonna steal from this one, and. Give it to this guy over here. <laughs> Sound familiar? Oh, yeah. Anyways. <clears throat> so, yeah, I've got them all about equal. You can go ahead and debubble, but honestly, it's not going to change a whole lot. Now, this will create its own liquid. And if you've ever had canned corned beef and you like the store bought kind, this will knock your socks off. I rinse the corned beef and I have um, rinsed all the spices off of it. It's already sat in that brine, so really and truly it doesn't need it anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and again with the vinegar, wipe the rim of your jar, kind of feeling along the way and visually inspecting the rim of that jar. And we're gonna go ahead with our hot lids. Ooh, and then one tattler here. I have a tattler lid. And go ahead and center that tattler on there. And I'm not adding salt to this because, as you know, corned beef is quite salty. If 
finger tight. Back off just a smidge. And raw packing is the only time I do kind of a, um, like a succession of jars. Um, usually I just do one jar at a time. So these go in the canner. I'm going to get the lid on the canner and uh, I'll show you how we put that together. All right, so my canners come down off of pressure. I went the full 75 minutes. You always have to go the full amount of time. Don't shave off minutes off of that. You're adding risk to an already scientific thing. Uh, I, they've done so much research on this to make this safe for home canners that you really need to follow instructions. Please refer to the ball canning book. Um, there's uh, Putting Food By is a great canning resource. Um, you can go on to the national uh, website for food preservation and get detailed instructions uh, and get proven safe recipes to use. Um, I venture outside that once in a while, but I really have grown into the canner of I can ingredients that I'm going to use. Just like a home cook, you buy certain ingredients to go into a casserole. You don't can the casserole, if that makes sense to you. So my canner's down off of pressure. I've taken my weight off. And let that come down. It takes over an hour. These canners are super hot. And I've undone my thumb screws. And let me tell you, when you are a home canner and you've got an all-American canner, this is my favorite sound. <laughs> when you let those thumb screws down. Because I have Tatler lids in here, I have got to get a couple of towels. Um, I'm going to take my Tatler lid out first. So if you ever hear one of them spewing, don't touch it. It's not worth the risk. So grab it, tighten, and set that bad boy aside. Go ahead and let these other jars come out of the canner. Now that is the raw packed uh, corned beef. And so remember we had three pints of that. And very little fat on that corned beef, so I'm really excited about that. Um, do not touch the rings, no matter how tempting, because rings will loosen up in the canning process. Don't touch your rings on a uh, regular lid. Let these sit undisturbed until tomorrow. And these jars are boiling in the jar, as you can see. I mean, they're still rocking and rolling in there. So very, very hot. Um, go ahead and, oh, I think I heard a pop. Get them all out. I put a towel down on the counter, and um, I'm going to leave these alone until tomorrow, and then I'll take my rings off and uh, wash them, because you will have liquid inside the canner that will evacuate, and um, sometimes some jars will be more than others, but I always wash and inspect the rings or the threads of my jars. You've got to wash that really well. Make sure that your lids are on tight. If ever you find a lid that is not sealed, um, you know, I'll check these before I go to bed. If there's something that doesn't seal, I'll put it in the refrigerator and we'll eat that right away. So now I've got to get my canning rack out. And usually I just grab a butter knife or in this case it's a paring knife and I can tell that the um, canner like the corned beef with the tabler lid more so than the other lids um, did let go of some liquid and I've got a tabler lid in this uh, and these jars down here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and um, grab that one out as soon as I can get to it. Beautiful elk or venison. It's all mixed up together so it doesn't really matter. They're very similar flavors. Um, and if you guys are interested in recipes that I use canned meats in, go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section. Now this is a tabler lid. 
And tabular lids, I use them right alongside my other lids. Go ahead and tighten that and you're done. Oop, we're hearing the jars pop in. Um, because you can reuse them over and over again. You don't have to buy new lids. The failure rate is a little bit more, but I think it's more of um, user error than anything. Uh, you really have to, there's kind of a learning curve that goes along with it. And once you get used to them, you'll love them. See, I can feel that ring is loose, but I gotta leave it alone. There's a lot of action going on in these canners, so I got 17 Sometimes. pints. One of these jars will stretch into two meals for us too. Um, but it, they make delicious casseroles, absolutely wonderful, wonderful one pot or one skillet meal, you know, like a skillet meal. So fast food my way. And um, all the work, it really wasn't that much work today. I did it while I was doing other chores and, uh, and just kept my eye on everything and stayed close to the canner. Very easy. So I hope this inspires you to maybe try your hand at some canning. If you get a great deal, poppin. If you get a great deal on meat, or your husband or yourself, like my husband and I am, uh, if you're hunters, this is a fantastic way to keep your harvest for a little bit longer. Because sometimes it's hard to get through all that meat during the year. We don't eat venison and elk every single day, so we have it, you know, two or three times a week. Um, Sometimes we only have it once a week. Sometimes we don't have it at all. So you want to be able to preserve it and not waste anything. And um, like I said earlier, if there's something you'd like to see me can, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, guys, go check out all the links below. I'll leave a link to my canner. Actually, I'm going to leave a link to the smaller one I really want. It's on my wish list. Hint, hint, honey. Um, I'm going to leave a link to that. And I've got my Facebook page, my mailing address if you ever want to drop me a line. And um, I always love getting cards and letters in the mail. And uh, yeah, elk, venison, corned beef, get it on the shelf because food isn't getting any cheaper, guys. I don't know if you've noticed, but everything is sky high and it's really hard to get by. And I want enough so I know that if something happened to one of our jobs, that we would be able to at least sustain ourselves um, through that hard time. So, okay guys, I'm gonna let you go and I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe. And if you wanna see recipes done with these canned meats, go ahead and leave a comment. All right, and a thumbs up and a subscribe. <laughs>